name is Mike Bach, and I'm an adjunct professor in the horticulture department at the college. There are over 20,000 species of bees around the world. The vast majority of them are solitary bees though, and that means they live alone and they raise their young alone. But some form colonies, and all honeybees do. There are eight species of honeybees around the world. The most commonly used by commercial beekeepers is the Western honeybee, and that's Apis mellifera. Apis meaning bee-like, mellifera meaning honey. So the literal Latin, Latin, Latin translation is a bee-like honey-loving insect. And some of the key characteristics of the Western honeybee are the fact that it is a perennial colonial nest, meaning that it is a year-round colony of bees. Also, it's large size population wise, especially in the summer when honey production is at its peak. They also create a lot of extra honey. And for commercial beekeepers, that's what they harvest every year. They take the extra honey, leaving enough honey in that hive so the bee has food to live on, the, the, the hive has food to live on over the winter. In our area, that's about 50 to 70 pounds of extra stored honey in the hives so they can make it through the winter. They're also the most widely used for crop pollination. And the beauty of the Western honeybee is that the queen knows exactly what to do uh, to maintain the populations of the hives. So in times of abundance, she grows the population by laying more eggs. In times of scarcity, she shrinks the hive population. Because remember that honeybees forage for plant nectar and pollen. And they use the plant nectar to make honey, which is their main source of carbohydrates. They use the pollen uh, for what's called bee bread, which is their main source of protein. So when you look at a calendar year for a Western honeybee hive, in January and February, as you see in this graphic, there's only about 10,000 bees in that hive. In March, the queen knows that spring is coming. So she starts laying more eggs so that by the end of April, there are almost 40,000 bees in that hive, all ready to go when the first trees and plants start flowering for spring and that enters the beekeeping season. So in May and June, the population goes up to 60,000. When you get to July, it starts shrinking a bit to 50,000. And in August, the queen recognizes that fall and winter are coming. So she starts laying less eggs. You go down to 30,000 bees in August, down to 25,000 in September, and even lower under 20,000 as you head into October, November, and so on. And it's really important to understand that winter, this idea of winter you know, activities, they really start when the temperature gets below 55 degrees because below 55 degrees, the bees form a cluster. And the top right picture on this slide show you bees in cluster inside a hive. This is where they gather together in a tight ball and they flex their wing muscles to generate heat. And at the center of that cluster, it's 90 to 93 degrees. Uh, so the bees stay nice and warm, even in the coldest of winter days. And you can see a picture, an infrared picture, the middle picture here of a hive in winter, where you can see how much heat that cluster generates inside that hive. Now, as a beekeeper, do you want some days in winter where the internal temperature of the hive goes above 40 to 45 degrees because then the cluster can move. They can move to another area of the hive where they have more food stored because they need that food to make it through the winter. You also look for some warm days above 45 degrees outside because on those days, the bees will go out for a very quick cleansing flight, literally just to go outside, go to the bathroom and dart back into that hive to warm back up. Now, what do beekeepers do to help out with bees over the winter? Well, they monitor the hive entrance to keep it clear from snow and leaves because the hives do need ventilation, the bees need it. And you also monitor food levels. So on warmer days, you might take a quick peek inside the hive and you make a determination, do they have enough food to make it till April when the first nectar flow starts? If not, you'll initiate emergency feeding and you'll use things like candy boards or dry sugar to give that hive enough food to make it till spring. You'll also be cleaning and repairing any equipment you have just to be ready. So in April, when the bee population explodes and they start gathering that nectar and pollen, you can support their work. Now, what can you do to help? I would tell you if you encounter a hive in the middle of winter, I would encourage you to leave it alone. There are probably bees living inside that hive and they're in cluster just trying to keep warm. And if you knock on it or poke at it and disturb it, they might break cluster and they lose all that heat they have stored in that cluster. And that's very, very hard on the bees. Bees die when that happens. 
if you do see an issue with the hive, maybe it's buried in snow or it looks like it's been disturbed in some fashion, contact that beekeeper as soon as you can so they can take corrective action because every single hive counts. So I hope that's answered your question. What happens to honeybees in the winter? If you have an interest in honeybees or beekeeping in general, I would encourage you to consider signing up for our Introduction to Beekeeping class, which we run every spring in the horticulture department at the College of DuPage. Have you always been curious about the science around you? Submit your question and it could be featured in one of our upcoming videos. Visit cod.edu dem and click on So That Explains It.